My name is Dan LaRock. Uh, I'm a creature artist at Vancouver Industrial Light and Magic, and I make movie monsters. I'm from a few places, actually. I come from this like uh, super hardcore rodeo western family and like ranch life. The furthest thing you could actually uh, come from for BFX. So I dropped out of high school in grade 10 and went to work in the oil field and did that for a number of years and then the oil field crash happened and then a few other bad jobs here and there. And I just realized I want to do something more. I want to do something with art and kind of that fulfilled my nerdiness as well. And I started going back to high school at like 19 years old, which was awkward as could be. I found out that I didn't need to. I could come as a mature student, so I packed my truck and drove out here and started up school. I don't think my parents were too impressed with me for a long time. And then when they found out that my grades were actually solid A's almost entirely for the first couple semesters, they were like, oh, he's actually doing it. They, they saw that I was taking it seriously and that changed everything. I chose uh, game art and design just because I had art in the title and it's games. I'm like, oh, I like games. <laughs> and when I showed them my artwork, I was like, what is, will this be good? And they said that, oh, well, you should go into 3D modeling. So I did that. And when I went into school, I got like a whole bunch of like, other programs that were you know testing the waters and showing you other practices and I realized right away that it's like I'm glad I didn't choose any of these other courses because this is the one I really really like. You think of like almost like a marionette theater you know, with like little puppets and stuff like that. My job would be, say, like the wood carver. So I'd be the one carving the models for like the actual like marionettes. And then you'd have another guy who would paint it, be a texture artist. Another guy putting in the strings, that'd be a rigger, like, you know, setting up the bones. And then you'd have a series of animators moving it around and lighters and all this type of stuff. So I'm usually pretty early on in the production phase. Uh, for my job, I typically use uh, Autodesk Maya, which is not too bad. It's great for modeling. Most of my time, if I can spend it, I usually try to spend it in ZBrush, which is a really, really intuitive kind of sculpting program. And it's very, very art-driven, which is something I really enjoy. Funny enough, I actually came to ILM and tried to get into the front door and let them get to get me an interview with the resume in hand. And the guy at the front was like, no, you're not coming in, man. So <laughs> I got turned away. Probably less than a year later, I, um, my friend was like, yeah, you should come to ILM, we uh, might have a spot for you. And I'm like, I would be there in a heartbeat. I got to actually do the, the modeling, sculpting, and facial type sculpting for animators for uh, Abu in Aladdin. Uh, ever since I was about six years old, maybe five years old, in my family, my nickname has been Abu. Uh, to this day, my nieces and nephews call me Uncle Abu. So it was just kind of like full circle that I ended up getting to make the monkey. <laughs> Definitely understanding of anatomy, and not only just the, um, the structures themselves, but understanding why they are the structures and why they, they are this way. Studying that type of stuff all the time is uh, super, super helpful and enlightening when you're trying to design creatures. Being as clean as possible, because at the same time, as much as you want to try and model around every wrinkle, it, it's not always going to work because designs change through production. Sometimes a client won't like this or that, so you have to make it sure that it's, it's flexible. I don't think I've ever walked into something where I was fully comfortable thinking, oh yeah, and then totally had my world shattered. I think it's uh, every job kind of presents new challenges. It's always been, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> it's easier once you start taking the steps than you'd think it was. And by the time you get to actually some point, you'll look back and you'll realize that, it's like, wow, that was not as hard as I thought it would be. And I think that's important to really keep thinking about. As long as you're still pushing yourself forward and still moving forward, and especially if you come from middle of nowhere like me, if you have a passion and love for it, I think, uh, I think, you know, anyone can do it. Get in the door.